Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fake Grand Order video. What am I doing today? Today I'm going to be talking about the Pick Up 2 summons, because it looks like they didn't actually change it all that much. So I, I can just get over it, <laughs> get over it, talk about them, because they're finally releasing. Um, starting with Jack the Mole, which started on the 13th, which I'll still cover here today in case you're curious, because their banner is until the 15th, but I'll also to be talking about, say, Shana... Sh Shonagon, uh, Murasaki Shikabu, Taigon Wong, and just very quickly talking about the four stars as well. And that's gonna be today's video, so let's get right into it. We'll start with just quickly going over the four stars. Uh, Yang Ching and uh, Ching Yang Yu and Haishin Lobo, they are all not limited, so for the most part I don't think you should... Any of, any of any of these banners, the only reason you would summon for specifically them is because... You want more copies of the character. Each one of them is not limited, so there's always a chance for randomly getting them. I think Lobo needs a little bit more buffs. I haven't used enough of Ching to have a personal opinion on anything besides the fact that I think she's very cute looking. And uh, Yang Ching is actually very good because all the buffs he's gotten, they've given this man like an insane amount of buffs, so he's actually pretty solid. Uh, the one character I'll make an exception to talk about is Yagyu, just to very quickly go over that he is a single target arts unit that hits one enemy. He can do real good at that, but also the most important thing is that he is story locked. So that means you have to go out of your way to get him. So if you're actually if you actually are a fan of Yagyu, you'd have to summon for him when he's actually featured on a banner. That's the only chance you're going to get of getting more copies and getting more or getting more medals or just getting him in general as you want to wait for a select a four star ticket to come somewhere down the line uh which i don't believe one is happening for at least another year or so it's a long wait so so for the most part that's the one unit i could see of the four stars that you summon for specifically is him but again only if you are just the absolute biggest fan if you <laughs> There's you don't have to worry about needing a single target arts uh, saber because there is a free to play one that exists, and I believe she's going to be getting her little thing that will let you get more copies of her soon. If you did not get her when if you did not get Summer Hokusai when she was here, there will be chances to get her. But in general, a single target um, there's a lot of single target arts sabers in the game. Chances are you already have one and it's already really good because all of them, for the most part, are solid. So, with those fours out of the way, now let's talk about the fives. We'll start with Jacques de Molay, who is a foreigner. Uh, Jacques de Molay, she is a foreigner, like I just literally said two seconds ago. Two quicks, one arts, two buster. Five hits on quick, three hits on arts, four hits on buster, five hits on extra. Her active skills are Veiling of Depravity A, increases party's attack for three turns, their critical damage for three turns, charges party's MP gauge, and then grants party's evil alignment except to herself for three turns. 20% to attack, 30% to crit damage, 20% to NP, and a cooldown of six. Second skill is Shroud of Turin, Fake B, grants self-invincibility for one turn, charges on MP gauge, and then grants abilities, uh, invincibilities, allies with evil alignment except for herself for one attack, one turn. 30% to NP, uh, cooldown of 6. Third skill is Innocent Monster, A+, plus, uh, after strengthening, which I believe we have the strengthening now, I believe. No, we're getting this one soon, so I'll read this version of it. Which it currently is, is gain critical stars for every turn for 3 turns, increase zone uh, quick performance for 3 turns, and then increase own damage against enemies with the curse status for 3 turns. Her star regen is 10, her quick up is 20%, and her versus damage against cursed enemies is 50% on a cooldown of 5. And the buff that she gets eventually is that she also grants a grant self a debuff on attack buff for 3 turns, inflicts curse with 500 damage for 3 turns to enemies when normal attacking. This activates first. Very nice. Um, nice addition to it, actually very much needed. All it does is provide you a way to curse, but it's, it's actually kind of huge. Passive skill, existence outside of the domain A, territory creation A, and divinity B. Her third skill is an anti-saber attack damage aptitude, because I believe that is what the original version of Jacques de Molay. If you did not know, Jacques de Molay actually was an arcade unit first, but it was a dude unit, and then she's a girl over here. You know, classic fate stuff happened over here. That's why she's technically not a collab unit, because we didn't get the version from arcade. We got a completely new, corrupted version uh, instead. So, next. Noble. So this counts as trust no one, not even yourself. <laughs> that was a very long way of me 
being able to say that. And her noble phantasm is the Vendredi Treze, which is Friday the 13th. And they actually did release her on the 13th. Unfortunately, it was not on Friday. That would have been Friday the 13th was not on October this year. Real shame. But it is Halloween, so feel free to watch some uh, Friday the 13th movies. They're really good. Oh, man. Friday the oh, never mind. Let me go back into this. Deals damage to all enemies. Inflicts curse status by with 1,000 damage for 5 turns to them. Inflicts the evil curse status for 5 turns to them. Increases curse damage on them by 100%. The MP damage at level 1 is 600%. And if you get her all the way to MP level 5, it's 1,000. And then she increases her own MP damage for 3 turns. This activates first. 100% to, uh, at 100% charge is 20%, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it is 40%. And that is Jacques de Molay. Now, uh, the one thing I'm unsure about with her is, because funny enough, when I was looking for her again, I was like, that's right, she would probably make a really nice, like, single target type of unit, because all of her buffs are, seem to be built around doing a little bit more damage when um, you're actually fighting dudes. Like this ability to give curse to dudes, even though it gets strengthened later on. It gives, but it, without it, it would be giving you more curse damage on dudes, so you'd think it'd be really good. Uh, but the problem here is that the, this ability here of getting 50% more curse, um, the curse that this applies doesn't apply first. So that means you deal damage and then Curse goes off, which means that changes the way she does damage. She isn't doing an additional 50%. So that's kind of a bummer. I also don't think she maybe has enough MP. I mean, she has 5 hits on her MP. It makes me be a little bit worried in terms of MP gain, when, which I always am with a lot of quick units. Which is unfortunately something I can't test unless I see a lot of use with the unit. And unfortunately, I mentioned this last time I talked about Jack the Malay. Not a lot of people talk about her. I think she's actually a really cool unit and she does some pretty neat stuff. But in general, people don't really talk about her all that much. There's, uh, there is some nice synergy that she has with, for example, uh, Domen. Because she is evil and she can give others evil. The problem is, is that she's not chaotic evil. She's neutral evil. So that means you can't get the full benefit from using Domen, which is kind of a bummer. Um... I do like this ability though, the idea of changing them evil, turning them evil, and then also giving them a little bit of invincibility. It can help out a little bit if you were in maybe a situation where you needed a foreigner like her to do her kind of stuff right here. You were looking to fight with like a cursed focus of them. That also means that you're also pretty reliant on curse actually going off. And sometimes curse unfortunately can't go off. Um because the enemy has his debuff immunity or something like that. So if they're if you can't get curse on them, you're kind of uh, so out of luck on that one. SOL. So yeah, Jacques de Molay. I like Jacques a whole bunch. I think she's cool. I like her in the story for Halloween. I think she's a great girl failure. I like almost all the foreigners in the game, I want to say. Uh, if I look into... If I remember all the foreigners, I want to say I like basically all of them. There, I don't think there's a single one of them that I can look at that either I know about them. Yeah, I like all the front row here. I like all the row here. And then uh, the dudes here I also like. Yeah, I like literally all of them. Um, so I always wanted to get them. But unfortunately, <laughs> big unfortunate is that we actually have... I don't know why I exited out of that page because I actually have to go back. If you're looking for a really good foreigner... It does mention to bring it up. They're different because she's quick and this one is arts. But Kahulakan is coming up. And she is an amazing foreigner. She can't be used with Van Gogh. That's the one thing that she has. Um, because she has existence outside of the domain. So she can be used with Van Gogh. Uh, she doesn't have existence outside of the domain. Because if they did, they would probably make her just a little bit too good. Because if you could just read that ability right there. Which converts invisibility to anti-purge defense. You can see that this <laughs> Kahulakan is kind of an insane foreigner. So if you're looking for just having a generic really good foreigner, I unfortunately cannot recommend you going for Jacques de Molay unless you were just a big fan of her. In which case, go for it. But if you're someone who's looking for practical advice, don't go for her. That's that's the the overall under on here. There's just even if it wasn't for Kakula Khan and if you weren't looking for a foreigner, Discounting her, and this is going to be true for a lot of the units that I'm going to be talking about, we still we still have Castoria, Morgan, Melusane, Oberon, and Koyanskaya of Light for this year. You have to be making your choices 
very smartly if you are a free-to-play person or someone just looking not to break bank to be 100% real with you um you have limited amount of summons in you for the last year, bit of the year here and we're not even counting the fact that pretty soon we also have to start working about worrying about draco as well all things to kind of keep in mind um as i talk through a lot of these units but anyway let's talk about the next unit that comes out so after um after Jacques should be Sai, so I'll talk about Sai or Sai. I always pronounce it Sai, but I'm pretty sure it's Sai. I'm aware that I'm probably saying it wrong, but it's okay. Uh, Sai Archer. She has two quicks, two arts, one Buster. Her first skill, Song of the Poet B, increases parties. Uh, four hits on quick, three hits on arts, two hits on Buster, five hits on extra. Her first skill is a Song of the Poet B, increases party's attack for three turns, and then charges party's MP gauge by 10% for every turn for three turns, recovers party's HP every turn for three turns, 20% to attack, HP regen is 1000, and the cooldown is 6. Her second skill is uh, Afakusa no Seki, A++, grants self-evasion for three attacks, three turns, increases on critical damage for three turns, charges on MP gauge, crit damage is 30%, the MP is 30%, and this is on the cooldown is 6. This, she gets this after her strengthening, which I believe she should already have at this point. Uh, no, it is not. We have to continue to wait for her. So never mind, she does not have this yet, so keep that in the back of your mind. So that means that she currently has this, which means she has no ability to charge on MP gauge, which is very unfortunate. Uh, as I'm going to get into it a little bit later. Starry Skies B increases on quick performance for 3 turns and then charges on MP gauge I think gain 10 crit stars. 30% MP is 20% on a cooldown of 6. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance C. Independent Action Self-Centered A. a snow Atop Mount Zalu. And then 1 Vehicle Teaching which gives her a complete charm debuff resistance of 100%. Her third skill is an anti-alter ego damage aptitude. Uh, I, I wonder. I wonder if they gave her this because of Doman. Hmm. Anyway, noble phantasm, emotional. You would know if you if you read some story stuff. Uh, her noble phantasm is the emotional engine, full drive, the pillow book, anointed. Uh, rank D plus plus. It hits four times. Uh, increases own damage against servants, enemies with a neutral alignment by 50% for one turn. Increases own damage against shadow servant enemies by 50% for one turn. Um, the MP level 1, the damage is 600%, and if you get her all the way to MP level 5, it's 1000, and then she also increases his own damage against enemies of the man attribute for a single turn, and this will activate first, just similar as the other ones, and that's 50% at charge level 1, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, that's 100% extra damage, and that is Sai, or Say. What's there to say about Say? Well... Um, I can say that without currently the version that we have in the game, it's one of those units that unfortunately has a little bit of trouble, has a little bit of trouble actually looping, which is unfortunate because that is mainly what she kind of does. Um, but I guess she, is she really a loop unit? The reason I say is because obviously a lot of these abilities really want you to fight servants and there's just not a lot of like fights where you're fighting a buttload of servants with because <laughs> this isn't just like neutral enemy it specifically says it has to be a servant similar to shadow servants and for man after you with brutes so she wants to fight a very specific type of person and the best chance to find them is usually in farming i guess um yes yeah, so she ends up being not the greatest when it comes to farming i've tried over the years to get her to farm because it's a shame because i absolutely love her i think this will probably help her a little bit more just because she has an additional charge of the mp gauge but it's so inconsistent at mp level one that it's really tough to loop with her because she doesn't have any like she has some form of attack increase but it's 20 percent but it'll, and it's the quick performance is also 30%, but if you just take that, it's 50%, and then all these have, like, what's the word for it? They have kind of, like, restrictions on them. So if you want the full 150% damage minimum that she could be doing with her Noble Phantasm as bonus damage, you have to make sure that you're hitting a neutral servant, a shadow servant, and someone who's a mana attribute to get that full damage out of them. And it's just not going to happen when you're fighting, like, a random saber dragon that just so happened to be there so she's not going to get any bonus from renewal phantasm that makes it so like like example if you were to fight a dragon 
who is just a regular old dragon except for he's a saber. This noble phantasm reads, deals 600% damage. <laughs> it, it doesn't have a single bonus effect to its name. It does absolutely nothing. <laughs> You're just doing a buttload of damage, and you can see kind of the issue of why she can be very inconsistent when it comes to farming and looping and stuff like that. In terms of other uses for her, I haven't really thought of trying to use her as like a someone in a challenge quest, but she would, I think, in theory, have some nice stuff in there, like the ability to charge NP gauge and party's HP. So maybe if you were in for a very long fight, like the ability to grant yourself evasion for three attacks, three turns, it's pretty nice. It's not bad. Um... Increasing crit damage is also nice because she's going to be getting a lot of it because she's a quick unit, so Yeah, that's that's Sai. I wish she was a little bit better um, At least on the NA version. I, I when she gets this buff out I will definitely be using it obviously because it's my unit, but getting it and then tra trying her out But the thing about Summer Scotty is that she is an improvement over regular Scotty But all she did was make the units who were maybe slightly struggling get a little bit better uh, at looping and she didn't really help the units that were really struggling in looping so Sai still needs some buffs on her own end to make her better at that um which would be nice otherwise i don't know why you would specifically use her other than i think she is really cool she's actually uh and plus i think her art's cool i think this was the i think the, i think literally she's the reason i started um watching more vtubers because her artist is the same one who did um bays in hollow life and that was enough for me to go like she really looks the same so i'm just gonna watch and that was enough and then you fall into the hole and then you can never get out but anyway that's sigh best of luck to you you're <laughs> going for her same for uh Jacques, of course again though i think you should not go for her unless you liked her like i did and you will appreciate her even if she fails <laughs> which she will fail you con constantly but you know what would be a good way of remedying that? You know a good way to pump more damage into her? More MP levels. Let's go. Don't please don't do that. I'm I'm in my head I was like, maybe I should do that. Don't do that. I literally can't do it anymore. I'm I'm tapped out. Anyway, speaking of tapped out on units I really wish I could summon on, it's Murasaki Shikabu. Murasaki Shikabu. She someone said recently I love the way you and your brother say Murasaki Shikabu. Um and you can thank my brother for Shikibu, because I used to call her just Murasha Murasaki, and then he started saying, after after Ninja Murasaki from Dragon Ball, uh, and then he started calling her Shikibu, and so I started saying the same. But anyway, Murasaki Shikibu, here she is, she's a caster, she has two quicks, two arts, and one buster. Four hits on that quick, four hits on that arts, four hits on that buster, and unfortunately five hits on that extra, so it's not four, 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 four. Her first skill is Song of the Poet A, reduces all enemies' defense for 3 turns, increases party's damage against demonic enemies for 3 turns, 30% to defense down, and versus demonic uh, dudes it is 30% up. The cooldown is of 6. Her second skill is Witchcraft Lyric D+, chance to seal 1 enemy's MP for 1 turn, and then charges own MP gauge, increases own MP damage for 3 turns. The MP seal is an 80% chance, the MP up is 30%, and the MP damage is 20% on the cooldown of 6. Her third skill is Diary of Murasaki Shikabu, which is B++, which is this is after a strengthen, and when do we get this, or do we already have it? It releases same time as uh, Saiza does, actually, which makes sense. They were both um, Valentine's Day units, so she doesn't have that yet, so we'll read the current version that she has, which is Diary of Murasaki Shikabu, which is reduces party's damage taken for three attacks, three turns, grants party a debuff immunity for one time, three turns. Increases party's buff removal resistance by 100% for one time three turns. Damage taken is 1,000 down, and the cooldown is 5. Uh, dur uh, and then the buffed version of it is that she increases party's damage against enemies with chaotic and good alignment for three turns. Um, they're two separate buffs. I just put them together. So 30% up to against chaotic enemies and 30% against good dudes, and that's on a cooldown of 5, and it's still a cooldown of 5. Her two passive skills are Territory Creation C+, and Item Construction C. Her third skill is an Anti-Lancer Attack Damage Aptitude. And her rank C Noble Phantasm is the Genji Monogatari Ayo uh, Mononoke. The Tale of Genji uh, Chapter 9, The Evil Spirit. That's funny, I didn't know it was a specific chapter. <laughs> rank C Noble Phantasm Type Poetry. Rank hits six times. Um... 
deals damage to all enemies, inflicts buff block status to them for a single turn. The damage is 450% on MP level 1, and if you get her all the way to MP level 5, it's 750%. And then her overcharge effect is deal extra damage to demonic enemies, which is 150% at charge level 1. And if you get her way to the final charge level, it's 200%, and that is Murasaki Shikabu. She is very good. She is an extremely good unit. Obviously, she's going to get much better with this. There are a lot of people don't see a, the need for an AoE caster, which I understand it. You guys like Berserkers, you like the Unga Bunga, you like hitting red and it go dead, I understand it. But there is a simplicity and beauty in using an AoE caster to take down a bunch of assassin dudes. It's a simple life, it's a wonderful life, it's a beautiful life. And I would recommend it if you had the ability to do so, because I think she's one of the best in terms of AoE and NA at the moment. If it was not, if it's either between her or, in terms of five stars, I should say, because there are some also um, pretty good four star casters that can do similar. But, but in terms of five star casters and AoE specifically for arts, I should say, uh, it's her and then I think of Shirazade, um, with obviously uh, Shigabu having way more advantage if you're fighting someone of a demonic element, which you will find a lot of demonic dudes in the game in general so in she will have she'll give the party 30 percent demonic up and then she herself will have a bonus of 200 of 150 percent so she would have 170 percent and then when she eventually gets this buff if they're of the chaotic and good alignment so in theory if you're fine is there a single demonic good enemy in the game <laughs> that's a very good question before i say anything is there a single chaotic good demon let me see. Yes, there is. Because Ibuki, <laughs> Ibuki is demonic. She is. Okay, there is. So <laughs> against the Ibuki, you just absolutely wreck shop. Open up business. Open up shop. Super simple. Boom. Does Steno count as demonic? No, she's divine. I was thinking she was demonic because she's like a snake lady. But anyway. Murasaki Shigabu. She's very good. She's a very fantastic AoE uh, caster for arts. Um, with the main issue here being that not a lot of... I understand not a lot of people will like a type of unit like this. And not a lot of people need a unit like this. But for the people who want a unit like this, I think it's a very good one. And a very fun one to use at. And plus, it's it's I, it's I a Rita servant. I love every single one of the Rita servants in the game. She's cool looking. I think she's neat. Look at that. That's a neat looking lady right there. Per perfect. <laughs> That's Shikabu. Really good. Best of luck if you go for her. I would be going for her, but I've already wasted untold amounts of multis already, and I don't want to go anymore. Van Gogh really took me to the cleaners, and then I did a couple summons on Halloween to see if I could get at least a 5 star, and of course I failed at that as well. Failure is the name of the game in October, and let me talk to you about my favorite failure. Taigong Wong. The only unit on here who is not limited in terms of a 5 star. All the other 5 stars are limited. He's not limited. That doesn't, by the way, when I said failure, the reason I say that is because of the fraud allegations that came out from the story when he came out. He's actually a fantastic unit. <laughs> I think he's also a, a cool dude as well, but it is funny. The, the, um, a lot of the stuff around that event makes me laugh, and so that's why I look, I say it with fondness the the failure of it <laughs> anyway let's talk about the fisherman taigong wong he's a writer he has two quicks two arts one buster four hits on quick three hits on arts three hits on buster five hits on extra first skill is the origin of war a plus which is an increase to party's quick performance attack and mp damage for three turns 50 percent 50 percent 50 percent on a cooldown of seven his second skill is god's execution b seals all enemies skills for a single turn and then increase own damage against divinity and demonic enemies for three turns. 50% against the divine and 50% against the demonic and on a cooldown of six. His third skill is the Philos uh, Philosophy Key Crest EX. Charges own MP gauge and then uh, charges party's MP gauge. 30% to himself, 20% to the party. And yes, that does include him. So this is basically 50% MP for him and 20% for the party. His passive skill is Writing A+. Uh, his third skill is an anti-foreigner attack damage aptitude. And his noble phantasm is God's Smiting Whip, Dashin Beyond, 
Ranky X, Anti-Divine, hits six times, deals damage to all enemies, deals 150% extra damage if they're divine, and then uh, the MP level 1, it's 600% damage, and if you get into MP level 5, it's 1000, and then he reduces their quick resistance for three turns, but this does not apply first, so damage will be applied, and then this ability will go on top of it. Charge level 1, it's 20%, and if you get them all the way to the final charge level, it's 40%. And that is Tai Gong Wong. Tai Gong Wong is a fantastic support servant um, for quick uh, specifically, but he can be used in general for um, multi purposes just because this third skill lets him be able to use his Noble Phantasm and then also charge on party's MPH just a little bit while also buffing them on the side with like quick performance for. Helping any of them that needs a little bit more damage to quick, to attack, and for MP damage, it's very nice. Um, and if you're ever specifically fighting against someone who's Demine and Demonic, he can also come in really clutch for them. Like, for example, the Koyan Skya fight from the raid, he was fantastic in that, and that's one of the reasons why. I remember when I got him, because if you remember the video I did when I summoned for him, I wasn't like going like, oh man, I really wanted him. I really wanted the... The CE is more than anything because the CE is gave damage bonus, but I was happy to get Daigong Wong along with it. I was like, alright, but you know, I'll see how he is. And then when I used him, I actually really like him a lot. He reminds me a little bit of a slightly more attack focused and less MP giving version of Waver. Uh, Waver is, able, is obviously a little bit better because he's able to give uh, 20, 20, he gives 20% to all and then 30% to one unit and he only gives he gives 20% to everyone, but then 30% to himself only. But what he, what Waver is, his, uh, uh, Waver is more of a support, 100% of support focus, but Taigong Wong can actually be used as an attack unit as well, which can come in pretty nice. What I will say, at least in MP level 1, is that depending on the CE choice that you get from the event itself, he might have problems looping naturally. So it might be a unit that you need to put in a little bit more like in the second skill, unlock mana loading, like stuff like that, to get them up to be like 20% here. So that way with a starting CE, you'd be able to get 100% MP at the start and not have to use your double Scotty's um, other stuff and maybe use even another support on top of it. Maybe one that can give him MP gain. Um, if you're able to use the Black Grail, maybe that would help just because he'd be dealing so much damage that you'd be able to get him with the extra hits of his Noble Phantasm to get you there a little bit quicker. But then you would run into the problem of then he's at... 20% um, or 0% starting NP, which he can give himself 70% if you include mana loading plus his third skill right here, which is fantastic, but then you're still missing 30%. And unfortunately, all the Scotties give 50% on the dot. As someone who has a little bit of a weird thing with numbers, and <laughs> specifically hating the idea of wasting 20% of charge, it can be a little bit bothersome, but you know, there's ways around it and you work around them. I really like Taigong Wong. If he was limited, I would say, hey, maybe give him a shot, but unfortunately he's not limited. So that means actually, if we look towards the future, which is this is gonna be the start, get ready for the next two years, because I'm gonna say this every single time. Um, where is it? It's right here. It, during the 30 million downloads campaign, they give, where is it? I know you're here. Is it not in here? That's really annoying. Hey, watch out for this one. It's coming in the future. Um, where is it? I could have swore it was somewhere here. Am I crazy? Is it right here? Milestones? No. Hold up. Let me pause. Okay, weird. It's just not on the site, but this is what I was talking about. During the 30 million download campaign, there will be a ticket where you can select an SSR. Um, which you can see here if we go all the way to the bottom, Taigong Wong is on it, along with a lot of units that are either story locked or uh, free. So in theory, if you really like Taigong Wong, that would likely be the best way to get it. I always feel really weird when it comes to Taigong Wong because I, I can't deny how good of a support he is. And if you want him, I say go for it, but man, it's so really hard to like say like, oh yeah, he's a fantastic support. But 
the supports in this game that absolutely break the game, like Castoria, like Koyanskaya, are just so much better than him. I see him more as like a secondary. Like if you if you were going to get a support uh, for quick, obviously the answer would be getting either Summer Scotty and then regular Scotty, and then as a secondary support, like hey, I can switch him in if I don't have Oberon or something like that. That's Taigong Wong. That's where I kind of see him as. So I see him more as like a once you're fully developed, I think you can get him there. Um, but if you're someone who just really likes him and you just want to get a chance for him, then I say, you know, best of luck to you, go for it. But otherwise, I would say you should not be summoning if that's what you're specifically looking for. And if you really want to wait, it'd be better to wait the two years. But if you're someone who's already planning ahead or maybe you're just like, I don't care about any of those other units, I only care about the dudes I like most... Then why are you watching a video like this? Why are you are you watching me? Are you watching this video to feel validated? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, do what you want. I'm not gonna stop you. I literally can't stop you. Feel free. Do what you like. I can only offer some advice if you're maybe someone who's like a little bit more on the fence and would just like to know. But in general, I say go for what you like. Um, and if that is I Tai Gong Wong, then that's Tai Gong Wong. But anyway, uh, switch over here. That's Taekwong Wong. Uh, best of luck if you do end up summoning for him. And that's finally every single unit that's on the Halloween Rebellion of 108 pick up 2 summon. A very easy banner to just kind of miss. This is a banner that you only summon on if you absolutely love a lot of these characters. Uh, so even if I do think Shikabu is fantastic, same thing goes for Taekwong Wong. Um... There's just too many big heavy hitters coming up that it's like, well, if you don't care about any of the heavy hitters and nothing in the future matters to you, like Akula Khan, uh, Tez, uh, Naito Chris Alter, Mapu Tofu Man, Kotomine Rasputin, I know the full name, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm not that, I'm bad at remembering things, but I, I remembered him. He's in New Year's as well. You don't care about him, you don't care about Muramasa, you don't care about any of the characters coming up in the game, then go for it. You don't care about, you don't care that, um, that, um, near, uh, that, uh, a beast form is about to come into the game and that we can't get them from the GSSR. So there's no way, you have to pay, pay, pay for the more expensive version if you want a chance at her. And her banners are also super crazy limited because they said all beast class units need to be super crazy limited because I say so. Then you know what? Live your life. Go for it. Tell me how you did. I hope you did the best. <laughs> and that's the end of this video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. This one was pretty long. Every time they're long now, I keep remembering that one guy who said, like, can you make stop making such long videos? And I try and make them shorter, but there's really just no... I have to specifically, like, make a short thing. It's something I did that's been in the back of my mind. Um, but I also know, logistically, I look at the data. I just want to also maybe think of stuff and be like, oh, well, I just not... <laughs> it's one thing to say, like, hey, the data says people like these long form, so I'm just going to keep doing them. That's fine. But when there's actually people who's like, but I really like short ones, well, I'm like, well, maybe I can think of something. Maybe I can think of something to help out. But that's a problem for future me. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I wish you guys the best of luck. Best, uh, have a good day. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Goodbye.